Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Yes, it's Friday. Finally, the day we've been waiting for. Because it's Masterclass Friday. That's the day we've been waiting for, not the weekend. The weekend was going to happen anyway. Masterclass Friday is a treat. It's a treat for me because I get to share with you some of my favorite things going on in the world of photography. Sometimes it's a photo shoot. Sometimes it's about the camera. Sometimes it's about the retouching. Sometimes it's about, I don't know, new things in Photoshop. So today we're going to be taking a look at some new things in Photoshop that were introduced this week. I know if you've been anywhere from, you know, except for maybe under a rock, you've been seeing uh, a lot going on with Photoshop this week and generative AI. So of course we're going to address that this week in the master classes and uh, I'm going to show you some of my favorite techniques and save some of my favorite things. I'm going to get you started on it so you can play with it yourself and I'm going to, I'm looking at my chat here, I'm just trying to figure out why this window is not doing what it's supposed to do. Hang on. There we go. All right. So with that said, uh, there we go. Chat's happening now. Um, Welcome. I know that some of you are looking at this on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, there's, for example, Sheila Ferguson, Shelly Ferguson's on there. Sheila, Shelly, she Sheila <laughs> Ferguson's on there from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Twitch, wherever you may be happy, to, wherever you may be watching this, happy to be watching this. Great. You can hang out there. But also, if you want to participate in the main chat, there's two chats. The chat for everything else and the main chat. The main chat's over at b.net slash Adobe Live. So that's the main chat that's moderated. I'll be looking at some stuff. Um, I'll be I'll, I'll be looking at the, the stuff you put there as well, but the moderators will look at it in case I miss it. Other people will chime in and help you there. So in case you're like missing out and I'm not seeing your question over there on the main chat, I know John's over on LinkedIn, but <laughs> if, you, if I miss you on LinkedIn or YouTube, Head over to b.net slash Adobe Live if it's an important question and I missed it. Okay. Woo. Today, this week was a whirlwind. This is probably one of the biggest weeks I've had in the last 20 years because it's such a monumental change and something to think about the way we use Photoshop from this point on. And I don't I don't get excited like that very often. I don't say those kinds of things very often. I'm not here just for hype. But this literally is something that changes the world in Photoshop, the world of Photoshop, the world of digital imaging, the world of image manipulation. So back in March, we released Adobe Firefly, which is our beta on a website that lets you use generative AI, um, ethically trained from uh, our Adobe stock images and public domain, so forth and so on, so that eventually when it's released, you'll be able to use it commercially. And then um, we kept building that out. And we still have. We released new features there this week as well. But we also put, took our first step, major step, towards building this into Photoshop. So I'm going to walk you through where to get it, how to do it. And I've got examples to last a lifetime because you can do it with so many different things. Okay. So with that said, now we've got the housekeeping out of the way. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Let's go. All right, so first and foremost, um, I do want to point this out before I forget. That's why I put the website up first, is that if you do, or if you, let's say you don't even have Photoshop and you want to play with the stuff, you can just head over to firefly.adobe.com and play. Like the website is now wide open. You don't have to sign up and wait. I know that was a big point of contention for a lot of people. They signed up, they had to wait for weeks to get in. No more waiting, even if you never heard of Firefly, even if you're not an Adobe customer, even if you've never paid Adobe, you can go play for free in the public beta and just create an Adobe ID if you don't already have one, <clears throat> sign right in and get right in and start playing. So the first two things we introduced were the text image and that's where you go in and you click on, or you uh, click in the text prompt, you can type whatever you want and it will generate an image based on that. So for example, you have some examples here that people have done, uh, gold flinch in a tree. So if I do gold fish in a tree, instead of gold finch, flinch, finch, then it will um, generate based on that. And I have no idea what a goldfish in a tree looks like, but we're about to find out. 
All right, so uh, generative AI started in March for us with Photoshop. So there's a, there's, there's a goldfish in a tree. All right, so let's back up. Then we also rolled out at the same time in March the text, uh, text effects. So I can hit generate. I can go here. I can either type my own example or use one of these. Uh, so I'll just start with one of these. Uh, we'll do this. We'll do this one. We did that one before. It always uses the word Firefly because it doesn't know what you want yet. So you could change it to um, I always do Adobe Live because we're on Adobe Live. And um, it's using, I don't know, wool, yarn, felt, red, pink, orange, yellow. All right. So let's do instead of pink, let's do purple, purple, blue and um, orange. Now I'm on an orange background, so that's probably not gonna work out too well, but let's uh, go ahead and generate it. And we can always change the color of the background too. All right, so again, typing in whatever you want and it will do that. So now it's changed the colors to those colors and it even worked on orange, but I could say no background and then uh, have that on no background. So text effects, that's all, that's been there. Then we rolled out this week quietly because the, the all the attention was on uh, Photoshop. We also rolled out quietly generative fill in the browser. So even if you never have touched Photoshop in your life, you can go to the website and do the things I'm doing here. All right, so let's go ahead and hit generate. Um, this is where I get for the first time to upload my own image. So I can upload my own JPEG. So I've got one here ready to go. I took this in studio and this is uh, my model Krista. She's just sitting on a stool leaning forward and I'm gonna go ahead and just say, get rid of the background. And I wanna type in my own background, uh, airport, um, waiting area. So I'm keying in my own uh, prompt for what it will replace the background with. And we're gonna get an airport. Hopefully we're gonna get some airport choices. You get four choices when it's done rendering, and there's one, there's two, there's three, but it looks like she's too far away from the chair and this, because that stool was way back here, so it doesn't know what to do, so no problem. I'm gonna keep one of these. Let's see, which one do I like best? I'll keep this one, keep it, and then I can go in and paint where, oh, hang on, let me undo that. Clear, 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 clear. I, want, I don't want to mess up the shoe. I did that by mistake last time. I'm just going to paint uh, what I want it to fill in with. And I'm going to say uh, suitcase. And generate. And it will hopefully give us a, some suitcase choices of what she could have been sitting on or under her legs. Uh, and there's one. There's two. I don't like these. I like that one. That one's okay. And there, there's another. And I could keep going. I could say, give me more. I don't like any of those choices. You get the idea, and I can keep going. Also, my selection's kind of weird, so it has to fit a suitcase into that kind of curvature there. So I could cancel that, and I could say, you know what? Let's give it some more room to work with, and let's go ahead and, and include that shoe. And then we'll generate it again, because I'm being picky. And we'll generate. <laughs> Uh, well, she does travel. So if you've not seen a woman like this in an airport, um, well, you haven't seen her in an airport. And yeah, I'm not liking these examples either. So uh, again, just keep working on the selection. You get the idea and it'll put a suitcase that she's sitting on because I've done this before. Anyway, um, that's the website. Generative fill. So you can use it to insert things. Over here on the left, you have your choice. Insert or remove things. So if you want to remove something from a photo of yours, you can. So the website was opened up using generative fill for you to upload your own images, change them, and then download the results. And again, not ready for commercial use yet. So low res, not ready for commercial use, watermark. All right, next up. Now that we got that out of the way, let's head to Photoshop. So I'm going to go over to Photoshop. I've got Photoshop open, no images open. And oh, I've, and, and let me explain what I'm doing here before I get into it. That's why I have no images open to remind me. I'm in a different Photoshop than normal. I'm in the Photoshop beta. So if you see the parentheses beta at the top of your screen, you're in the beta versus the release version. If you, um, if you just update your Photoshop, you will get four new, well, three, three to four new features because one's kind of like missing, but you'll get three to four new features 
in the release version, but you will not get the generative fill. The generative fill, just like we showed on the website, is only available in the beta. So here's the way it would work. You would update Photoshop, because we did come out with a new release like we always do this week. Update your release version. Get the new gradients, get the new remove tool, and get the new um, uh, gradients, remove tool, adjustment presets, which is the one that's kind of missing, and uh, one more. I'm not thinking of it, but there's another one. Fourth one, if someone remembers in the chat, <laughs> put it in there for me. But there's a fourth one that I'm just not thinking of right now because I'm having a, a brain freeze. Anyway, if you want the generator fill, what you'll have to do is you'll go into uh, the Creative Cloud app and you'll, you'll even see a banner for it, most likely. Get the Photoshop beta. But even if that banner wasn't there, you would just simply head over to your beta apps the, this section here in the left-hand panel, click on it, and then you would download and install, you would install the Photoshop beta. So you would have then two Photoshops, one in your applications folder, the regular Photoshop, the other one in the applications folder, Photoshop beta. They can both coexist. They can even, depending on how you're set up, they can even both run at the same time. I don't really recommend that you do that, but you can. And you don't have to uninstall one to install the other, which is great. You can have them both installed, switch back and forth between the two to do whatever you want. You want to do real work that, that you don't have to worry about it beta crashes or anything like that. Use the release version. You want to use the beta, then use the beta. All right. Um, so someone says, after I install the Photoshop beta, my original copy of Photoshop disappeared. Well, then go reinstall it because what might have happened is the beta might have replaced an older version of Photoshop. So if you didn't have the release, the regular release version first, then yeah, you need to go um, install that. Because, um, yeah, just what I said. So if it did uninstall your release version for some reason, just go back and go to all apps or photo and you'll see Photoshop and it should say, uh, not that one, it should say install. So uh, all apps, and if it doesn't say install, just install it. And that way you'll have your regular Photoshop again as well. All right, someone said, Paul said, I just downloaded it. Great, Paul, great to see that you can join us. Now, one last thing, because this, and I'll just get this out of the way now so it, I don't have to deal with it later. Let's hide uh, others. Uh, one last thing, and I'll bring up a note because this has been happening as well. You know, as soon as we come out with this, I don't have it. I don't have that feature. I don't have this. It didn't work for me. But because, of course, you're going to hear from all the people that, for whatever reason, couldn't get the beta. So I put together this list of five things that if you're not seeing the generative fill features in your beta, these are the things you need to try. So first one, the generative fill feature is only available in the public beta version 24.6 or higher. So if you're on 24.5, 24.4, you, you don't have it. You don't have the generative fill. So make sure you do a check for updates to make sure you have 24.6 or higher. Um, now, once you've installed it from your beta app section, like I showed you, hit the check for updates just in case you install the one you install still isn't up to date. Uh, so do that one more time and check it just to make sure. All right, next up, uh, you, uh, <laughs> so a lot of people say, well, I see the contextual taskbar, I have my image, but I don't see generative fill because you have to make a selection first before generative fill will even show up. So if you, if you haven't made a selection, it won't be there yet. So you have to make a selection in your image using whatever selection tool you want, lasso, marquee tools, whatever you want, and then you will see the, hopefully see the generative fill. Last but not least, if it's grayed out, let's say it's there in the edit menu or there on the taskbar and it's grayed out, you can't, it's there, but you can't use it. It's restricted to people 18 years of older. How does Photoshop know you're 18 years or older? You put that birth date in your account for, for both your Creative Cloud account and go ahead and do it over on Behance as well, just to make sure. So Behance.net, B E H A N. A-N-C-E dot net. Go to your account there, put in your birth date so that you're 18 or over, put in your birth date in your Creative Cloud account so that you're 18 or over. That way it now, and of course you're out quit Photoshop, relaunch it, maybe even reboot. And that way it will know you're old enough to use this. <laughs> All right. 
And last but not least, if none of that works, uh, I've seen a lot of people have success just simply uninstalling the beta, rebooting their computer, and reinstalling the beta. And if none of that works, meaning you've done everything I've tried and everything you've read, uh, just reach out to Adobe Care on Twitter, at Adobe Care, and tell them, and they'll help, they'll walk you through and hopefully get it solved for you. Okay, now that I've done all of that troubleshooting, now we can go have some fun. All right, so got all the housekeeping out of the way. So now let's, let's for the next uh, 40 minutes or so, let's have some fun. All right, so I'm going to go to my library. In my library, I put four things, four categories, four groups. Add or replace, meaning images I want to add or replace something to. Remove, things, images I want to remove something from. Expand, canvases I want to expand to see more of the image. And also some examples of using the remove tool, which is also AI-based, but it's not, it's not Firefly-based. So it just uses machine learning and AI. All right, so let's go to my add and replace here. And um, I've got some quick examples I'm going to show you real fast. Let's go here. I've got this one. I don't think, I'm trying to also use examples I haven't recorded earlier or shown earlier in my Instagram reels and TikToks and all that. All right, so anyway, we got this, this woman here, and uh, she's not wearing any jewelry. So we, we want to give her some. So I'm just going to grab my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to select where an earring would go. And I'm just going to go ahead and type in generative or click. So uh, uh, hold on, hold on, back, back, back. See, my contextual taskbar came up. And see, I have the generative fill button. If I deselect, my taskbar drops down to the bottom. And even if I pull it back up, there's no generative fill. So that's what people are saying. Hey, I have the taskbar, but generative fill is not on there because you don't have a selection. It's contextual based on it will do whatever it's whatever it thinks it needs to do based on what's going on in the image. So as soon as I make a selection, now generative fill is there as an option. So if you don't make a selection, don't have a selection, you won't ever have that button. Also, even if you're not using the contextual taskbar, some people may not like it. I love it. But if you don't like it, it's under the edit menu. So you could go to generative fill there as well. Um, so that way you can get to it no matter what, whether you have the taskbar or not, if you have a selection. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, hit generative fill. Uh, generative fill, there we go. And type in my prompt. I'm going to do fashion earring. So the prompts are in English. Um, they are... They could be as simple as a couple of words, even maybe one word. They could be a whole sentence. They could be a description. But you don't have to say things like, put a fashion earring on her ear. You don't have to say any of that. Just, it knows what you've selected, so it knows that's where it's going to go. It, 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 you don't have to tell it to do it. You don't have to say put or I command you. You don't have to do any of that. Just type in what you want to happen in that selected area. So uh, fashion earring, and I just hit generate. And it will generate a fashion earring, or it will give me three choices of fashion earrings to pick from. And uh, then I can go ahead and uh, make my decision. Now, I've timed this prompt at about 20 to 30 seconds. And look at what it did here. Look at this. It not only put the earring in, but based on the lighting, so you can see the hot spot on her face, it put a shadow behind it because it's saying, well, if the light's coming from her face, even though we didn't select her face, it's looking at the whole scene, saying there would probably be a shadow there as well if the, if the earring were far enough away from her face. And then again, I have two more choices to pick from. And whichever one I want, I can pick that one. Or I can say, I don't like any of these. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, generate more. So Ozzy's asking, does it matter what selection you pick? I assume you mean tool? No, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a selection, it doesn't matter how you made it. So you can use any of the selection tools you've used for the last 20, 20 or 30 years, and it will, uh, as long as you have a selection, you can use whatever you want. Okay, so, so now I have three more choices, that one, that one, and that one. And let's ooh, see, and how, see how this one put it right in her ear? Like it literally knows what an earring is and where it's supposed to go. All right, so next thing I want to do is say, well, what if there's one I just don't like? Like, I don't like this purple one. I think that one kind of looks fakey. Uh, to be honest, it just doesn't look real. And so I can say, I, if, and by the way, on the properties panel, you have this uh, menu. You can click and you can just delete it. 
because then that's going to take up when you save this file that won't be taking up extra space for the ones you're never going to use. And also, if you don't, if you think the results are horrible, meaning this is just, I don't like the, the result. But if I think the result is bad or good, I can tell the, the uh, AI team, so or the AI, so that the, and the team, so that it will keep getting better. If there's something inappropriate, something that was like naughty, something that was like insensitive, then you can also report it so they can um, kind of look at that and say, no, 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 it shouldn't be even kind of, it shouldn't be generating these kind of results. So in this case, I'm gonna say poor because it's not really giving me a shadow, it's not really realistic. So I'm gonna say that's a poor result, but I'm still also gonna delete it. So now that one's gone and I um, can keep generating more, but I don't keep the ones I know I would never use or wouldn't give my client as a choice. That one's good, uh, that one's good, that one's good, that one's less good. So I'm gonna just delete it. There's nothing wrong with it, I just don't like it. And I'll keep the ones I want. If I want more, I just keep hitting generate. Now, you, you don't have to stop there. And notice what it did if I find my layers panel here somewhere. Layers, where are you? Layers. My layers panel says it's there. Am I just not seeing it? I am not seeing my layers. Oh, I see libraries. I see adjustments. I see properties. I did not see my layers panel. All right, let's 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 bring it up. Oh, it was there on the side. Okay. There we go. It was just down there. Okay. So on my layers panel, you notice what it did. It added that earring as a new smart object generative fill layer. Now, one of the things that people have also asked for is, hey, it'd be cool if it would rename the layer what you typed in your prompt. And prior, the like literally the day before this became available, that's what exactly what it was doing. I don't know why the team removed that last minute, but I assume it'll be put back at some point where it was actually naming each layer what you typed in your prompt. But for right now, it's generative layer one, generative layer two. You can rename them if you want to. Okay, next up. Um, it added that one layer. I still have the original background, so it's non-destructive. I can always go back and turn it off, turn it on, create another one, so forth and so on. But I'm going to keep that one on. I'm going to go, um, I don't even have to go to the background. I'm just going to go ahead and make a selection around her neck. So this time I'm going to say um, something like this. So that way, this time I use the lasso for the person asking do you have to make it a certain selection? No, I use the lasso this time and not very well. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and generate a fill and I'm going to say fashion necklace. All right, so there's my prompt. I'm not being very descriptive or creative. Fashion necklace and there we go. Generate because I want to see what it comes up with. I'm not good at describing things. All right. Yes, it gave a vertical uh, earring because my selection was vertical, just like it's giving the necklace in this direction because this is the direction of my selection. Uh, so, uh, and, and here's the thing I love about it. The fact that it's looking at the rest of the image, it's kind of matching the necklace to the earrings. So it, look at that, <laughs> it's just mind boggling what this is doing. All right, so we can go for broke. Let's do one more on this image. I've never tried this on this image, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Let's do this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See where I'm going with this? Uh-huh. Crazy uh, lasso selection. You didn't think you used the lasso tool before? You'll be using it a lot now. Generative fill, uh, fashion, sun glasses. All right, holy cow is right, Roberto, I know, right? And even though my selection around the neck was further out, it still knew what a necklace was supposed to do, so it made it further, up. it made it fit. Now, the reason I don't like, <clears throat> sometimes I don't like doing sunglasses because sometimes it replaces the eyes. And so in this case, I don't like that one. That one's cool. That one, her eyes are closed. So it's all, it's not just putting the glasses on to make them clear. It's not that smart yet. We got to train it to get better, but it is putting some sunglasses on her. 
and it is uh, making them fit perfectly. Now, what I want you to think about as, I, as you're watching me do this, many of you are Photoshop users, amateurs, intermediate experts, people that have been doing this for years. Even if you didn't, there's nothing that's doing that you couldn't do manually. But if you were doing this manually, if you wanted to put those sunglasses on her, you'd have to first go find a pair or shoot a pair that were the exact angle. And then you'd have to Photoshop them onto her. Same thing with the necklace. The earring would be easier, but it still needed to be done with the shadow and everything. And you would have to spend the time, more time looking for the asset or shooting the asset than actually doing this. So uh, someone, Howard's asking, can you remove glare from glasses? Funny you should ask. I just posted a, 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 a Instagram reel and a TikTok and a short and a Twitter uh, video on that exact example this morning. Um, so the answer is yes. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, see that was a bad, that one's a bad result. I'm going to report that one. That's a poor result so that it can keep learning and getting better. And these are okay. So uh, again, I probably wouldn't use any of these because I would want my, my person's eye. So I could say uh, dark, let's try dark sunglasses. So that way we just have the sunglasses with no eye. So I'm just changing my prompt, I'm adding a word and I'm just gonna hit generate again. And again, how descriptive you are will also determine what you get. So I just said sunglasses, it gave me sunglasses and it's trying to match her makeup, her face and everything else. So it's giving me clear glasses that I can see through. But if I make them dark enough and see now it's the rim that's dark. Uh, so uh, dark sun, fashion sunglasses, dark lenses. So again, it doesn't know what I want. It's guessing, so I'm gonna have to be more descriptive to get what I want. So just keep in mind, if it's not giving you what you want, two things you might want to adjust. Number one, the prompt, that's an easy one. Number two, the selection. So if the selection's not good, it could also vary the result. Oh, I like that one. That's actually her eye, that looks good. And see, there we go. We got the dark lenses now. So I can get away with that one because you couldn't see your eyes that well anyway. Okay, so we had fun already with this one image. I got way more to show. So let's get out of this one. Let's don't save because, you know, why, why do I need to save it? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go in for the person that asked about the sunglass or the reflection. Let's do this one. I'll zoom up. So that, that kind of glare, that the glare that we as glasses wearers have been dealing with for years. Yeah, this glare. All right, so I'm going to use my object selection tool this time. And the object selection tool, I can uh, select the object of the reflection itself. It's smart enough to see that that's an object. Hold down my shift key, get this one as well. Hold down my shift key, get this one as well. And it just made those selections. Now I'm going to get out of the tool so I can stop being distracted by it. All right, so now I didn't get this one right here. I didn't get this one right here. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. And now I'm going to hit generate to fill, but I'm not going to type in anything. I'm just going to hit generate. When you leave it blank, it will guess at what you want. So I'm going to leave it blank and let it guess. And hopefully it guesses correctly that I don't want that stuff there. Sloppy selections, it's okay. It's smart enough to get this right. And it's smart enough to get this right. So there's choice number one, choice number two, choice number three. I kind of like choice number one, so I'm gonna go with that. Eh, maybe I like choice number three better. Nope, choice number one. And I can generate more if I didn't like it. But remember, I left the parts in the middle because now I'm gonna create a composite layer. Command option, command alt or control alt or command option shift E. That will give me a composite layer on top of what I've done so far. So I could paint on that layer. It's not a smart object. I still have the one below it. And I'm gonna use the new remove tool and just note that I've turned off remove after each stroke so I can keep painting all my strokes and then do it all at once. So the first one, I'm gonna do this part of the eye over here. Next one, I'm gonna do this part of the eye here. Then this part of the eye. So the, the pink is staying there. I'm not holding down a shift key or anything because I've told it don't do it till I'm ready. 
So now that I've told it don't do it till I'm ready with the new AI based remove tool that's now in the release version and the beta, I'm going to go ahead and click go. And that's it. So here's our before and here's our after. Before, after, before, after, before, after. So yeah, removing glare from glasses just got a whole lot easier than it's ever been before. I've got more glasses to remove, but let's go ahead and do, do a couple more examples. I'm not gonna close that one because it, then it goes and does a whole thing. So let's go and do this one. So now we're gonna expand the canvas. We're gonna add some things to it as, for, as well. So this is one of the images that the Photoshop team actually used when they uh, demoed this feature. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting this. Anyway, puppy dog. We love puppies. Everybody loves puppies. I love puppies. All right, so um, puppy, and I want to do two things. Number one, I want to expand the canvas. I want to give them some more height. Maybe I want to put this vertically on something. So I'm going to go grab my crop tool and I'm going to crop up. You can always, you've been able to expand an image area for years now. Oh, you know what? And let me, let me do this. It doesn't matter, but it's easier for people when they see the background is white. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to make it white. All right. So there, now you can see what I'm doing. So I just expanded the canvas. That's it. Now we're going to grab the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to, um, just select that area. Now I have two choices. I can either leave it blank and let it figure out what it needs to put there, or I could hit generate fill and describe the top of the image. So let's do it both ways. Generate, just blank. I'm not typing anything in. We're waiting, the Jeopardy music. Cool, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. Sweet. All right. I could also say uh, rainy, rainy day in the park. Generate. So now I'm actually typing in a prompt for that area. Da, da, da. I know. How many times have you tried to remove glare before and hate it doing it? There we go. That's the kind of look I'm looking for. Rainy day in the park. All right, this would be my go-to. I like that one because I, I like the feel of the sky in that one. But we're going to do one more thing. We're going to take our lasso this time. And I'm going to use my pen. I'm just going to lasso this whole area under our puppy. Because he's about to jump in something. We're going to say jump in puddle of water. That's it puddle of water. All right, that's my prompt. Generate. Da, 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 da. Puddle of water happening today with hopefully, will it do it? Will it give us a puddle of water and a reflection? Yes. That's the key is that it's smart enough to know, hey, this object is over this object. There would probably be a reflection in that puddle of water. Huh? Huh? Come on. You can't beat this. This is amazing. Right? <laughs> Again, think about how long it would take you to do it manually. Nothing it's doing. You couldn't do manually before, but this is doing it in seconds as opposed to hours. Okay. Um, what if I go back to my... So, now I put in two layers. One for the puddle. That's the one I just did. One for the sky. That's the one I just did. Uh, so, let's go back to the sky where we have all those results. And I'm going to say rainy day in the park a rainy sky with bubbles and generate. Can you take the path up a bit more? What do you mean? Towards me or towards the back? There we go. Got some bubbles now. Got some mystical bubbles. Got some bubbles there. I like those bubbles. Those are cute. And so the question is, can the person say, can I take the path? I guess you mean towards me. So could I go to the crop tool? Oh, let's uh, go to the crop tool one more time. And could I pull it forward? Is that what you mean? 
And let's go to the rectangular marquee tool, select that area again, generate fill, and don't fill it with anything. Towards the back. Well, towards the back, like, how would I do that? Like, I don't know how I would tell it to go. There, It's going to infinity now, so where would I tell it to go? All right, anyway, there's the foreground. And again, shallow depth to feel based on the subject. And I could go to the left or right, but I, I don't even know how I would go further back because it already goes as far back as I can see. So, yes, if there's a way, to, if you if you can select or a way to do it. All right, next, uh, we did a expand, we did a add, we did a remove, actually we did a remove, we did an add, and let's go ahead and see if there's something else I wanna do. I wanna do next. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, these, this is a crazy one right here. Your task, if you choose to accept it, they're friends, they're close friends, they, they love each other, it's awesome. But she likes this shot so much, she wants to use it as a profile picture by herself. In other words, she doesn't want her friend in it, and this, like she wants a version of just her. She's not gonna be in that uh, next to that ocean anymore anytime soon, you're not gonna go out and be able to reshoot it. She just loves this picture. Could we have it without the friend? Now, if someone gave you that task, you'd probably cringe. And this is what I love about this week. It's taking the cringe out of using Photoshop. Because you'd cringe because you would look at it and say, oh, my God. I'd have to rebuild. At first, I got to get rid of the person. Then I have to rebuild her shoulder. And I can't just flip this one over because her arm is up in this. So it would take you a while, not to mention the hair, not to mention everything else, to get this right. Okay. That's, yeah, good, exactly. That's not easy. So let's go ahead and I, I already made the selection just so you have to watch me lasso all the way around, but I made the selection already. So let's load the selection in. And I'm just gonna load in woman on the right. This is simple, this is all I did. I lassoed all the way around her. I lassoed into the person on the left and that's that's it. So nothing nothing rocket science about this. Now, I will warn you, when you use generative fill on something this close together, especially with people, since we can't, since there's no just checkbox that says remove, that's what I want. Sometimes, doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it will assume, oh, you've selected that person, you want to replace it with a different person. And so you, just, if, it, if that happens to you, just keep regenerating and it'll eventually give you one without the person. All right, so let's go generative fill. I'm not typing anything in, I'm just hitting generate. Will it get rid of the fingers? Oh yeah, I selected the fingers too. The first time I did this, I didn't do the fingers. <laughs> so yeah, the good point, the fingers on the shoulder are selected. Dun, 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 I don't need to say anything, you can kind of see it. It put a guy there, a person there, Took a person away. So again, sometimes you'll get a new person, <laughs> but for the most part, it will eventually give you one where it's gone. So because I saw, and the first time I did this, it like magically got rid of the person and just creepy fingers left on the shoulder. But I selected the fingers this time so that we would see it. How long would it take you to do it manually? You could do it. It's nothing it's doing you couldn't do, but you would yeah, you'd be spending a lot of time. Holy moly is right. Um, yeah, so head, LinkedIn headshot, there you go. So if you just needed something that you didn't need the other person in it, away you go. Now, I, I really thought this is fun. Let's, let's do it again. So again, if you need to get rid of the two people, especially this person on, on, her, on her left, my right, look at that. She, there's no shoulder there. And this shoulder is not easy to copy over and paste because the arms extend it. Person in the back, not that hard because it's in the back, but then you'd have to build in everything that's behind her because what do these columns look like? What does this, this walkway look like? What does all this look like if we got rid of the two people on the sides? So let's go to our select menu once again, load selection, just so you don't have to spend, I don't spend time uh, drawing it for you. 
But there it is. I drew the bottom portion of this person, the top of her head, this entire person, just with my lasso. That's all I did. So now that I've done that, generative fill, click and generate. And let's see what it does. Uh, duplicate some water. Shh, don't tell customers how quick you can do that. Why would I ever tell a customer I can do this much faster and still charge you the same? All right, there we go. Got rid of it, added the background in. Got rid of both people, different versions with different hair. Different, ooh, I like that hair, but she might not like that hair, but I like that hair. And uh, there we go. So that's probably a more realistic one because our arm's kind of tucked in. So that one's probably the one, the right one because of the hair. And again, I keep generating, keep trying it until I get the one I really want. But how long would it take you to magically paint in, clone in all the, the columns in the background? Even if you could, even if both people were standing behind her and you could easily cut those people out, you would have to, so someone says she lost an arm. No, she didn't. That's her arm. Like it was, that's the way her arm looked. If you look at the original, that's her arm. It di I didn't touch the arm. I know I thought the same thing, but that is her arm. It didn't lose anything. All right. So, um, yeah. What about the one in the middle? What about the one in the middle? You could remove her too, if you wanted to get rid of her too. And it would give you the background without any people. Just as easily as it did without the two people. Okay. So next up. Getting, getting rid of things in photos is just that easily. All right, here's another one, expanding the canvas, especially that ones, because I used to shoot really tight for portraits. Once I started shooting for stock, I stopped shooting so tight and giving more headroom and giving more space because people using it for advertising want the space around the subject. But this is an older shot where I cropped in so close, I'm cutting off her right side, her left side, her right side, I'm even cutting off some of her hair. So again, we'll go to our crop tool. We'll hold down the option key or alt key this time. Oh, hang on, we'll pull out from the sides. And we can even recompose it. Let's do it a little bit more like that. All right, cool. And now we'll grab our rectangular marquee tool because again, you make your selection, you can use the magic wand, make your selection any way you want. And we'll select that. I'm cutting in a little bit, so I'm getting a little sliver of the original so that it kind of knows what I want. So I'm um, just selecting the two sides, generative fill, generate. How long would it take? Forever, because I don't have the patience to, to remove those two people. And there we go. So we get her hair, we get different versions of her hair, we get her shoulder, we get all that stuff back in. I kind of like this one's my favorite. And now I don't have to worry about all those shots I shot back in the day that were too tightly cropped because I get them back. All right. Uh, it's not just for people. It's also for scenery. So for example, let's grab this one. I don't think I've shown anyone this one yet. Saved it for you guys today. Let's go ahead, grab our crop tool, and let's go this way with it. You know what? Let's go for broke. Let's not only go that way, let's go up. I haven't gone up on this image yet. All right, let's do that, and we'll just grab our magic wand, select the white. Now, notice, uh, it, it, of course, when you use the magic wand like that, it selects right to the edge. It's better if you expand it into the image a little bit, even if it's just by a few pixels. That way it kind of doesn't leave a line when it's filling in. Because I've noticed if you don't do that, it could leave a line that's visible. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the selection by, I usually do 20 pixels. That's my magical number. And so this is what it looks like when I expand the selection. And notice where I got expand selection from. Right on that super helpful contextual taskbar, expand selection, because it always prompts me with what I might want to do next. Like deselect, invert the selection, so forth and so on. All right, so next, uh, let's go ahead and do generative fill. We're going to type anything in because we're just going to let it generate. Can you still market the photo as yours? No. I mean, you could, but you'd be lying because parts of the photo are not yours. No different than if you did sky replacement today. If you did any other kind of thing where you added something into it, unless you shot those things, it's not all yours. So this doesn't change that. 
it's the same thing as before this week. If I went to stock, grabbed a chair and put it in a, in a, in a, in a set, that chair is not mine. I didn't shoot it. So that doesn't change. All right, so we extended, we extended the top and the bottom. I forgot what the side looked like. That's what the side looked like. So it continued the foliage out. It continued the shrubbery out. And now I'm going to grab my lasso because you know what? I've always hated green water. Like I know that's the way it looks. I've never liked the way it looks. So I'm just going to go ahead and just select all that water. And now that I got that all selected, generative fill, um, clear blue water. That's my prompt, clear blue water. Dun, 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 dun. Clear blue water, here we come. Let's go, clear blue water. And no, that's not blue. No, that's not blue. No, that's not blue. It's getting it wrong. Let's generate again. Sometimes it doesn't do it right. So let's see if we get it this time. All right, can we get some blue water this time? No, it's failing me on my blue water test. It's giving me some in interesting water, but let's let's take out the word clear. Let's just say blue water. So remember, change the selection or change the prompt. If you're not getting the result you want, so let's take out, let's simplify it. Blue water, not clear blue water. Blue is not clear, <laughs> I know, right? So yeah, let's take that, that word out of it. Nope, still not giving me blue for some reason. Gave me blue chair. Huh, this has worked before. So sometimes the AI doesn't get it right. This is one of those times. Dun, 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 dun. Blue water with koi fish. Yeah, if it would give me blue, I would love it. There we go. Now we're starting to get some blue. Okay, we're just starting to get some blue now. So again, I just kept generating until, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, give it to me. Give me blue, give me blue, until it started doing it. Now, if I generate again, it, it will probably keep giving me more results. So don't be disappointed if you're not getting the result you want first couple times, especially if the prompt looks right. Selection looks right. Keep trying it. And that way you'll keep hopefully teaching it to, hey, give me some more results. Like now it's back to not being blue again. No, no. So I would go back to one of the previous ones. Not that one. Probably that one. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to grab my lasso. And I'm going to just select a small area down here. And I'm going to generate a fill and I'm going to type in rowboat all right and each one of these is a layer so if it's still not the way you want you can delete that layer and start over there is a rowboat and look at what it did not only did it give me a rowboat it gave me the rowboat's reflection in the water so it's smart enough to know that if you're going to put something in water it needs a reflection. All right, one last one, just for the sake of fun. Let's do one rectangle over here. And let's do generative fill. And I love giraffes. There's a giraffe. Generate. Miniature robo. Yeah, I drew a small selection. <laughs> so if you're not getting something as big as you want, or it's too big, Adjust your selection size. So yeah, I wanted a small rowboat because you know the water's not that big. There's a giraffe. There's a giraffe looking at me. And there's a giraffe. All right, this is probably be the one I'd pick. And look at what it's doing. The light's coming from this direction, so it's lit from that way. And um, it, it's gave me a giraffe. So there's my scene that I originally started with this. Expanded it out, which gave me that. And then that water 
and then that boat, and then that giraffe. Okay. Next, who needs Lightroom? People that need to organize their images. Still good for that. Uh, let's try another one here. Oh, I got like five minutes left. I forgot. There was someone that gave me an idea for an example. Oh, removing tourists. That was it. So uh, this one I did show on Adobe Live earlier this week, but it's, it's kind of a fun one to show. I shot this uh, waterfall in Iceland and I was never happy with it because I didn't even bother setting up for the long exposure that I should do because there were just so many people in the way. I was just bummed. I was like, my leg was hurting. I was just having a bad day, a bad morning. Didn't get there early enough to get rid of all the people. Just not good day. By the way, the guy in red is Scott Kelby. We both went on that trip together. All right, but anyway, let's grab the lasso tool. And I've got my lasso set. If you look at the top left here on the control panel, I've got my lasso set to add to the selection. So I don't have to keep holding down the shift key. I can just go ahead and grab these people, grab this person, and select all of these people, including my buddy Scott all of those people as well and these people all right so didn't have to hold down the shift key because i turned that option on and then we'll do generative fill and we'll say tourist be gone no double rainbow no not this time and 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 that would be the one or that one probably this one no i actually kind of like that one or i keep generating before after because at first i thought what's this thing over here but that was already there before after tourists are not a problem anymore so, like I said, still wouldn't use this because I didn't shoot my long exposure the way I wanted to. So, let's do one more shot from that same location. This one. This one I did shoot the long exposure and guess what I did? I just raised my camera above everyone's head so I could be happy. But I was still not happy because you need to see the bottom of a waterfall. That's what the whole point of a waterfall. Like, this is okay, and this would work, but I need the bottom. Now, it doesn't know what the bottom of that waterfall looks like. But at least I can get the bottom of a waterfall. So let's go ahead and uh, make a rectangular marquee selection once again. And generate a fill. And generate. So, um, does this new version reference the selected version? No, it doesn't. And I've asked for that. So hopefully we'll get that in because on the website, you can click similar. You can click a button that says similar and get the, get it to generate similar results, but not yet. All right. Nope. That one's okay. That's the one I'd use from these three, but I can generate some more. And it's giving me the bottom of my waterfall. And that one's okay. That one's great. That one's okay. So it was like, in this case, it's the middle ones for me. It's that one. And no, sorry, the middle one and third one. Third one in this case, middle one in this case, or I could generate again and keep going. But once I get a bottom I like, I'm done. The rainbow carries all the way down. The water comes down. It's not that waterfall, but it's convincing enough to say, I took this shot and added the pieces in that was missing. That means it's not all my shot because the bottom part portion I didn't shoot, but at least I have a shot I'd put on my wall and say, hey, I love that waterfall. I love the way it looks. It's not always about me needing to take credit for everything in the shot if it's something for me personally. If it's something I'm selling, then that might be an issue. And again, just a reminder, this is not available for commercial use just yet. That's kind of cool and interesting. I kind of like that one. All right, so there we go. Zoom out. Zoom out. I don't know why my zoom is not doing what it's supposed to, but there we go. Zoom up. 
Okay, folks, we're out of time. We're out of time, everybody. Cheers for watching. Thanks. Needed to expand the selection. I can do it from the sides as well. Great. Have a great day. Go play with Jenner to Phil. Cheers, everybody. Catch you on the next one. Stay tuned for what's next.